Hey everybody, how's it going? Dale here. Hey, today I got a brand new Lenovo IdeaPad 3 laptop. Um, the model is 15ITL6. 15ITL6. Uh, it's brand new, basically out of the box. Just got Windows 11 on it. Doesn't have any data or files or pictures or any of that kind of stuff. Um, but the customer wanted a little bit bigger SSD in it. It came with a 256 gigabyte NVMe. M.2 drive, uh, she wants to bump it up to 512. Normally I would just open it up, take the 256 out, put in the new 512 and do a clean install of Windows. But I wanted to try, uh, well first of all, I'm, I'm gonna be installing, get it over here, I'm gonna be installing a brand new SP or Silicon Power NVMe M.2 drive, it's a 512 gigabyte. I use these drives quite a bit. They're up very affordable and they, they work really well. Um, but Silicon Power has their own cloning software that I've never used. It's called NTI Echo. Uh, it's free software to download. Um, when you, before you can even download it, you have to enter this long number underneath the barcode here just to make sure you got a SP or Silicon Power drive. Before they let you download it, they send you a link to verify your email. And they email you a, a activation key once you install the software blah 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 i'll put a link down below where you can get that software um but this is basically what the drives you know look like still in the package so i just thought i'd take a chance or an opportunity to try out that software i've already installed it on this computer here like i said it's called nti echo this laptop has eight gigabytes of memory the 256 gig drive has an 11th gen core i3 processor uh, it's got a touch screen, which is kind of cool. It's got SD card slot and all the other basic bells and windows and USB-C, of course. But um, so for any cloning, if you're going to do it, you know, I'm, whether you take the drive out or you're leaving it in, I'm going to do it this way with my little M.2 PCI Express or NVMe USB adapter. I'm going to put the new drive in here and clone it, you know, off the USB-C. This adapter comes with a USB-A cable as well, of course. But a couple of things you want to do, first of all, before you clone, uh, is you got with Windows 11 and some Windows 10, you want to go to start. You have to turn off device encryption, go to your settings, and go over to privacy and security. And it's right here, it's called device encryption. It's basically a light version of BitLocker. I've already turned it off, but you have to have that off. Whether you're doing it the way I'm doing it now, or if you take drive out, you can't clone an encrypted drive. Honestly, I'm not sure of any cloning software that will let you do that. So just keep that in the back of your mind too. And if you do have a lot of data on your computer and you've been using it for a while and you're upgrading your SSD, you might want to do a little bit of cleanup, make sure there's not a lot of programs running in the background. Keep your AC adapter plug, plugged in. You don't want to be doing it on a low battery and maybe even disconnect from the internet so Windows isn't trying to install Windows updates and stuff like that during the cloning process. Now this, like I said, I've never used this cloning software so I'm not completely sure uh, if it's gonna do it in or out of the Windows environment. Hopefully it does a reboot, does it out of Windows because typically a lot of the software, cloning software does that, plus it seems to go faster that way, then it doesn't matter about internet. But you still have to turn off device encryption. But on your C drive, if you right click on it and just go to properties, go over here to where it says tools, maybe run a quick scan on your drive, make sure there's any potential windows or file errors. Um, you could even go to the command prompt and do a check this slash F or R if you wanna wait for that. But disable or close down any background apps that are running before you clone um, if you're doing it this way. But typically in the shop here, I would just take the drive out go over to my cloning station over there and just clone it over there. It doesn't take very long. I use a Cronus software. I've been using it for years. I have like the Enterprise Edition. I can clone all day long with it, but the clones go pretty quick using that. So in this case, we're going to use this little adapter here. Going to slide it open. See, it's just got an M.2 slot in it here. We'll pop the new drive in there. and there's no tools for this. I'll have a link down below where you can get one of these, but there's a lot of different types. This particular one only does M.2 NVMe drives. You can buy them, get one like something like this. This will do both M.2 SATA and M.2 NVMe. It supports both types. 
but I like this one, these ones, they work really well. So I'm gonna just cover it back up. All right, we're gonna pop this into the USB-C port on this laptop. It's a brand new drive. Yeah, make sure it, give me a ding dunk. I am connected to the internet right now, no big deal, but let me unplug it again. Oh, there we go. All right, I was just waiting for the USB notification to make sure <laughs> it was seeing it. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, when you go to download this software through Silicon Power, like I said, they're gonna send you email with a serial number and I gotta verify your email address, they, they will, email you an activation key. I think they said it's good for like two times or two installs. You can actually buy this software from NTI. It's like 28 bucks just to buy it outright and then you can use it however long you want. That's like for one license if I remember. I checked it out the other day. So I'm just gonna, I already got it installed on here. I'm gonna double click the icon for NTI Echo. And this is basically what it's showing here. Okay, it's showing that our Source drive is the SK Hynix 256 gig, already, already you know, in the laptop. Here's our 512 PCI Express SSD, blah, blah, blah. Now they give you, let's see, options for different cloning modes. Uh, dynamic resize is recommended. That, that way it's gonna utilize all the space on the, on the drive. Most cloning software give you options like this. If you choose one-to-one, -one, don't really wanna do that because you can see on our on our destination drive here it's leaving all this unallocated empty space over here it's just going to copy the existing drive exactly the partitions onto the new drive and we don't really want to do that so we're going to go dynamic they also have a user to find just depends on the size of ssd you're cloning to like a one or two terabyte you can try different options there but we're going to go with dynamic that's what they recommend um Let's see, I'm gonna hit okay again. I've never used this software, so I'm just kind of winging it here, guys. Um, oh, before I click on that, here, I got a, a shortcut right here for the, open it up here. This is where you end up going to get, get the software. They got the download, then from there, they give you instructions on how to, how to actually get it. Like I said, I'll stick a link down below to get to that, it's super easy to find though. So I'm gonna choose okay. And I guess I'm going to click the start button. Now they're telling us, boo, 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 before disk cloning is good practice. Yeah, back up all your data. Of course, this laptop has no data. It's just Windows 11 because it's brand new. But if you do have a lot of data, it's a good idea to do a backup of all your stuff in your user account at the very least. Um, just, just in case your computer becomes unbootable or whatever. So I'm going to hit continue. And now, telling us uh, secure boot enabled in the BIOS. That's good. And it's gonna shut down after the clone. I'm just gonna hit continue. You might wanna read all that stuff. And RAID mode, okay. So if you had a system that was set up as RAID in the BIOS, um, this isn't gonna work. That'd be like if you had an older computer with like an Intel Optane drive and a two and a half inch mechanical drive. HP and Dell did a lot of those. I hated working on those because people would come in and want a bigger or a new SSD or something like that and we would either have to do a clean install, take the Optane drive out and put a brand new M.2 NVMe drive in the M.2 slot and just eliminate the, the Optane drive and get rid of the two and a half inch drive. So anyway, that's not the case here. So yes, we're gonna continue at our own risk, I guess. <laughs> yes, down here on the bottom. But yeah, if you got RAID, enabled in the BIOS, this isn't gonna work. So I'm gonna hit yes. More warnings. Just letting us know it's gonna start. It's gonna erase anything and everything on the destination drive, which we don't care because it's a brand new drive. So I'm gonna hit yes, start cloning and see what happens. <clears throat> I've been under the weather for about the last week or so. My voice is all congested and stuffy and my ears are all plugged up. So forgive me if I sound like an idiot <laughs> so it is going to restart which is good curious how long it's going to take hmm 
what do we gotta do? Do we have to choose? Oh, let's count down. Begin cloning process, abort cloning process. I'm just gonna let it do its auto thing here. Could have just hit enter there and it would have went it looked like. So now we're gonna get into the cloning environment, it looks like. All right, it's starting. Not sure how long it's gonna take, but like I said, we're just all we got is a source drive with Windows 11 installed on it, not a lot of data or any data. And if this is successful, we'll open it up and pop in the new 512 and see what happens. Looks like it's going pretty quick, actually. Been a minute or so, jeepers. It's going really quick. I'm impressed. Just wish I sounded better, guys. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Rep replication completed successfully. Eh, no mouse. I guess OK. We'll hit Enter. I assume it's going to shut down the computer so we can install the new drive. Wow, that was quick. That was one of the quickest clones I've seen in a while. All right, so it's off. Gonna close the lid. I'll take out my little dongle here and get our new drive out of there. Then I'm gonna flip it over, open it up, and we'll do that and see what happens. All right, there's our new drive we're gonna install. So let's get it opened up, guys. All right, I got my camera repositioned there. So let's uh, unplug the power cord here. Gonna flip it over. Now before I, before beforehand, I did remove all the screws on the bottom. There's one, two, three, four, six. There's ten screws. Now the on this model, the four screws in the front are real short screws. If you can see them, I got them over here. Uh, so you want to, you know, the four in the front are short. All these other screws are the exact same. So just be mindful of that when you're putting it back together. So we're going to remove the bottom cover here. I'm, I always like to use my little plastic triangle spudger tools get into a little seam on the corner here get it started these typically open up pretty easy been in these many times and Lenovo likes to use the shorter 2242 instead of the 2280 M.2 drives they use a goofy little adapter but you can see that comes off quite easily and where the SSD over here is positioned, they got a little copper, little heat plates on there to help with heat dissipation. And they even got a thermal pad on it over here, but this is the current M.2 that we're gonna take out. It's got that adapter, so it can fit in the 2280 position there. But we will unplug the battery. It's right here. Just gonna pop it out, pull it out carefully. And after you do that, you might wanna go ahead and open it up very carefully. And let's hit the power button few times to drain any extra juice that might be flowing around in there. Don't want to drop a screw or your tool on the little tiny motherboard in there and brick it. So always be careful and don't touch anything you don't have to. These um, have four gig. This model has four gigabytes of DDR4 on board and one slot. Currently, there's a four gig stick in here. You could put a like an eight or a sixteen in here and get it up to twenty gigabytes if you wanted to. RAM expansion. So I'm going to use my little number zero Phillips magnetic tip screwdriver. Let's remove our mounting screw here. Oops, see, screw got away from me. And you can see this is just like a little adapter with the M.2 drive on it. We're going to see if I can utilize that thermal pad. Here's our drive we just cloned onto. Carefully put it in the slot. All right, see if I can get this thermal pad up in here and use it again. Now let me get the screw in here first. So push it into place. Not too tight, just 
nice and snug. Our controller is down here in this area, so we're going to get the thermal pad over top of that. Peel it off of here. Ah, these things are so fragile. Wouldn't be the end of the world if you didn't have this on there, but as long as it's there, I might as well use it, I guess. Just like that. So there's your 2242 with the adapter that we took out. So, so that was quick. Let's, uh, I think we're done. Gonna plug the battery back in and hopefully it boots up. <laughs> Just be careful plugging that in. Again, don't touch anything you don't have to, guys. So we got a new 512 in there. We're gonna pop the cover on. I won't put all the screws in until I know for sure everything's good, but I will definitely button it back up when all is said and done. She's going to bring in her old laptop soon here so we can transfer some of her data onto the new IdeaPad 3 here. So this has flip to boot enabled, so as soon as I open the lid, it should just turn on and begin to boot. Um, so yeah, let's just see what happens. Oh, no, because we unhooked the battery. I got to hit the power button, my bad. Well, that's a good sign. We got our little spinny ball. Now, when all is said and done, you get back into Windows here. It looks like we had a good clone. Boy, that was a fast clone. So you can see how easy that was. Of course, if, like I said, if you had, you know, 50, 100 gigabytes of data on there, clone probably would have took a little longer. I'm not sure, uh, but most likely. You can go ahead and un uninstall your NTI Echo if you want or leave it on there, it's up to you. You can go and turn your uh, device encryption back on. But yeah, look at that, we got a great clone that went pretty good. So <clears throat> guys, I have lots of videos on my channel about cloning, using different software, different methods, different types of drives, different types of laptops. So you might wanna maybe go check some of those out. Leave a like, maybe hit the little bell so you can get notified when I put up a new video. Appreciate y'all watching, have a great day.